Now, Shabazz Bhatti uh, released a statement uh, anticipating that he might be assassinated one day. And in that statement, he said, these Taliban threaten me, but I believe in Jesus Christ, who has given his whole life for us. I know it is the meaning of the cross, and I'm following the cross. I'm ready to die for a cause. I'm living for my community and suffering people, and I'll die to defend their rights. Someone who knew Shabazz Bhatti personally and had met with him just recently is Jeff Tonicliffe, who is the International Director of the World Evangelical Alliance. And Jeff is joining us now by Skype. Jeff, uh, even though Bhatti was expecting one day he might be assassinated, it must have come as a shock to you, just having met with him so recently. Yeah, absolutely, Jim. I was just had dinner with uh, Shabazz about a month ago in Washington. And um, we were talking that evening during that dinner about uh, the, uh, the threats that were on his life. And at that point, there was a threat even to actually remove him from cabinet. And I, and I said to him over dinner, I said, Shabazz, if you end up back in cabinet again in your role, um, you know, you understand the threats that are against you, don't you? And he said, clearly, he said, but this is my calling. He says, as a follower of Jesus, I feel that I need to uh, live out my faith in this way and protect the rights of the minorities and stand up for human rights and religious freedom. Now, as a, as a Christian, as a committed Christian, he was standing up for the rights of all minorities, not just for the Christians, right? Absolutely. He was, he was uh, responsible for all minorities in Pakistan, and that was his heartbeat. He, he wanted to stand up for them and represent um, uh, the values of Christianity uh, as it cares for all people. This blasphemy law in Pakistan, Jeff, is it just sort of a blanket uh, covering of anything that is not Muslim and therefore is infidel? Yeah, in some ways it is. It's, it's, a, it's a statement that, uh, uh, but it's also been misused or potential, and being potentially misused uh, by, uh, you know, if someone, a neighbor has something against their, their, their neighbor, they can use it in that way as well. And so that's what uh, one of the situations that was brought about uh, uh, recently in Pakistan and that, uh, that uh, Shabazz was fighting. Uh, what, now, as the International Director of the World Evangelical Alliance, uh, you may or may not know the uh, uh, answer to this question, but let me ask it anyway. Do you have any sense at all of the, uh, the state of the, uh, of the church in, uh, in Pakistan, how many Christians there are, and is it vital, is it hidden, is it underground? Uh, what's the status? No, uh, the, the church is a vital church in Pakistan. Obviously, it's a small minority. Uh, we're talking hundreds of thousands of Christians. Uh, and, and, and it's not underground. Uh, it's, uh, in fact, there's been some attacks on churches there in, uh, in, in recent months and years. And uh, it, as Christians, they're seeking to live out their faith in, um, in, in the public square. Uh, and one of the things that Bhatti did uh, uh, when, he was in, when he was in cabinet was he, he was able to pass some legislation because there was, uh, there was discrimination against not just Christians, but minorities in the country in the civil service. And uh, under his uh, responsibilities, he was able to change that legislation where there was now a, uh, a, number of, uh, a, uh, a minimum number of people now that from the minority groups who will be serving in the um, uh, civil service. Now, Jeff, this is uh, just one country where Christians seem to be under a lot of pressure. Uh, we've uh, known about these attacks on churches in Iraq. Uh, there's pressure in pretty much all of the Middle Eastern countries uh, against Christians, especially in those nations that are Muslim-led. Um, what, what is the state of the church generally in the uh, Muslim nations? And secondly, and this is a big question, a recent question, the, uh, uh, the, the recent uh, fall of uh, despotic leadership, I'm thinking uh, Tunisia, I'm thinking Egypt, I'm thinking what's happening in Libya, uh, maybe happening in Yemen, uh, Algeria, possibly Jordan. Um, is, is this going to have any impact, do you think, on, on the church generally? Well, yeah, I mean, in some ways, there does seem to be a rising tide of, of attacks against Christians in some of these places by some of these radical groups. And, um, and, it, could, and, and it could have uh, some very serious impact on the church. Of course, we've been concerned about in Iraq, for instance, where there's been a, a declining number of Christians. Christians are leaving, having to leave the region, uh, the Palestinian West Bank, where they've un been under great pressure. And so we are concerned about the uh, movement of Christians out of some of these regions. And However, uh, we, we believe that there's some new opportunities for the, uh, even coming out of this tragedy of, of uh, Shabazz being assassinated yesterday, uh, to, to reach out in some new ways to uh, 
Islamic leaders to say, uh, this can't be our future. We've got to find a new way of engaging. And I think uh, there has been some outrage even coming from Muslim leaders to some of these attacks. And we need and we're beginning to build some of those bridges. And the fact is that uh, not all Muslim leaders are uh, Taliban, not are uh, not all are radical, not all are out to wipe out the church. Right. Absolutely. And, and I think that's, you know, the uh, the stereotyping that takes place. I think there is a again, I think there's a growing number of uh, leaders in the Islamic world that are. Uh, that are outraged by these kind of attacks as well. And uh, we need to be able to speak in a common voice uh, against some of these things that are taking place. And, and I think that, again, the situation that happened in Pakistan uh, just yesterday um, needs to um, be a, a instrumental in bringing about uh, some new ways of doing things. We're actually calling on the United Nations uh, to form a new task force, a commission on... Uh, dealing with uh, violence against uh, religious minorities. Uh, we think it's important that this is taken up on an international basis. And uh, we certainly are talking to governments around the world right now about this issue. And uh, we're urging the United Nations to take action and uh, pull together a task force that can respond to this seems to be rising tide of violence against religious minorities. Well, Jeff, you're uniquely positioned. Uh, you're definitely in a... Uh a place of influence. Uh, we're very, very uh, uh, impressed with the work that you're doing and we wish you Godspeed in the future. Jeff Tonicliffe, CEO and International Director of the World Evangelical Alliance. Thank you for coming our way. Thanks, Jim.